growing up, not having a father, automatically you get an incense of, you feel like you need to be the man of the house. Now, no one says it, but innately, you start to feel like I need to be the man of the house. And if you do not have a strong role model, and this is the reasons why I say to women all the time, it's very easy just to feel that emotion of, I'm a single mother, I'm independent, I'm fighting, I'm working hard. That is amazing and we need that. We need that nurturing side. We need that understanding for us to even feel love. But sometimes our boys need that protection, need that understanding that a male is going to give that you can never ever give, no matter how much you try. And there's missing nuances that we miss within that understanding. So when I was growing up, having that lack of father, I was brought up by a woman. Now that's amazing. My mom's a strong black woman, but hear me, I was brought up with a woman's analogy. It's not a bad analogy, but it's on a woman's analogy, not a male's. So therefore now, I am now formulating myself of an understanding of what a female thinks, not knows, thinks I should be doing. That's difficult on a young man from, when, from the get-go. It's different from a young man where he doesn't have a father. So now he's looking at TV, he's looking at films, he's looking at other influencers to see what a father figure is. So if he's only getting one way, one talk, one learn. So now I'm looking at the streets. I'm seeing these guys, they're flossing around in big clothes and big I am and they're selling drugs, but I'm not seeing them being broken as well. I'm not seeing them knowing that they didn't have nothing. So I always say to people, as much as we feel like our men are not stepping up, our men are not being counted, and I, and I feel like they're not, but there's a percentage of men and a percentage of us is, how do you know any better if you've never been taught? If you've never, like, picture a man that feels like he's doing the right thing, but he doesn't even know if he's doing the right thing because he's never been shown. So second nature, he's going to lash out. Second nature, he's going to act with aggression. He's going to act with another substance because he's never been taught to share that emotion. And a lot of the times when I was growing up as a man, to share emotion was weak. To share emotion was, you're not a real man. So a lot of our women need to praise our men when we step up, when we come to you and say, yo, babes, I'm kind of feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit dairy. Don't shun him away, be like, oh, what move? What is... You ask for men to show their emotions, and when they do, you shun them away. We need to allow our men to feel like it's okay to cry. It's okay to feel emotion. Because just as much as we say women, women is emotional and men is logic, no, it ain't. Men are emotional and logical beings as well. Women are logical and emotional beings as well. So it's about having that balance. And me growing up and not having that was a really, really tough time. And then seeing the crime, then seeing the wrong role models, then losing my brother at the age of 16, four days after my birthday. Growing up around my lifestyle, when people hear my story, they're like, oh my God, I can't, be I can't believe what you went through. But I don't even see it as bad. It was normal. Like, if you're seeing something every single day, until you're someone takes you outside the box of something different, then how can you tell me that I'm living anything different? You know, that woman that was um, um, uh, um, um, on drugs or whatever, that was, you know, drug, druggy Caroline, but it wasn't druggy Caroline to us, it was just Caroline. She was just on drugs. So it was a, a events of things that our young males constantly see. If you're constantly seeing negativity, if you're constantly seeing a certain way of living, then you are bound to follow suit. You are bound to start seeing. I always said it starts from looking out from the window, you know? seeing what's going on outside. Mummy hasn't come home yet. Mummy's finding it a little bit difficult to get home because she, she's struggling to put the bills and the roof over the head. So that's even hard. But we used to have a community where I used to be outside and I had my neighbors like, all right, right, that's it, get in. I'm like, what? She like, get in my ass until your mum comes. We don't have that understanding no more. We look at so many children and what breaks my heart is because we see this case scenario happen day in, day out. And that's, this is across the world. You will see a young person about nine, 10, smoking cigarettes, swearing, profanities. And you're looking at him thinking, wow, what a naughty little boy. I'm glad it ain't my child. And you carry on walking. But guess what? Nine years later, that child is causing a nuisance in your community. That child is robbed probably half of your houses. That child is probably now stabbed one of your children. And now you want to stand up and uproar. Now you want to be like, oh, I always knew that he was going to go to prison. I always knew this was going to happen. But why don't you not intervene at that time when he was nine years old? Why don't we intervene? We knew his mother wasn't doing the best. 
but we sit there and point fingers at people. Oh, look at her, look what she's doing. We're quick to put someone down, but we're not quick, quick to pick them up. You see she was struggling. So that is us as a duty. Shame on us. Shame on the community for seeing something and not stepping up. Shame on you. These are small little things that we should talk about. We talk about it takes a room community to raise a child, but we walk past them every day, single day on the streets because it's not your child, because it's not your nephew, because it's not your problem. And then you start giving me, uh, you know, the devil's advocate talk, you know, the ones there. Oh, what if they stab me? Why are you taking it to the extreme? Because you, fa you fantasize on what the media says. These are our children. They're not demons. They don't run around and just automatically just want to, no. It's communication. How do you communicate with people? If you disrespect me, I'm going to feel disrespected. So I'm probably going to act a different kind of way. But we, we put up certain little barriers because it makes us feel better. But then you're quick to film a young person being stabbed and killed, not picking up 999, not dialing 911. You're filming it. And you say, I'm raising awareness. To who? To what? To glorify the media's narrative to make them shun down on our community and tell us how bad we are already. So that's, that's convenient. That's convenient that you're doing their job, but then you're the first person to point and say, no one's helping us. No one's helping us. It's funny how black lives matter when we are getting mistreated by the government, by the police, but black lives don't matter when we're killing ourselves. Black lives don't matter then. No one don't want to put up their hand and watch. No one doesn't want to look around and feel like, hold on a minute, we're losing our voice. And this is history, you know, this is lineages. This is certain parents that have one son. Now he doesn't have no kids. That history is now gone. Their bloodline is now over. Are we not thinking about what's going on right now? But we want to talk about other issues and other topics that don't benefit us within our community. It's all clickbait. We was just on Will Smith and Jay the other day. Wow, really? Really? The big word of the day was entanglement? Really? Oh, funny, that's convenient because six weeks ago, you were telling me I love you, brother. You were telling me I love you, sister. But now we're slating everybody back down again. Okay, back to normal. Shame on us. We point a lot of fingers and we, we ask and we wish for things. There needs to be more people in power. We need to change this. You don't, you don't even stand up yourself. You're not even ready to stand up yourself to be counted, but you want so many things to be changed. It's funny that.